Today I'd like to do a quick review on my motor measuring system complete. Uh, it's, a, it's a motor tester. It'll test stators and it'll test rotors. And what I'd like to show today is how you can test rotor strength with this tool. So this is made by a company called Racers Measurement System. And once you get in the box, is a handmade, purpose-built measuring tool. Now they put it in these little little boxes here. This is the base unit, and from the base unit, you can select um, button for rotor measuring, uh, motor measuring, and for run. And what the motor measuring tests stators, and the run mode is almost like a motor analyzer that tests uh, KV and amp draw of your motor. But I'm going to focus on the rotor measurement system to give you an overview of that. Now in the box they give you an attachment that plugs into that into this base unit. You can see that there's a hole here that you would put your rotor into. Let's get the wires out of the way. And they also give you a one of these 1 8 connectors that you would use almost a headphone connector as the wire to you know carry that signal from that to the tool um, so what I'm going to test here is I do have a rotor that I took out of one of my motors and I actually have two of these and we'll test you know, test the two of them to see which one's stronger they're basically identi identical looking so without a tool like this, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So I'll just show you how this works. So first, you turn the, the system on. It'll say MMS complete, select a mode. RMS is rotor measuring system. Now, what first what it wants to do is to set the, um, like the surrounding Gauss field. So if there's any magnets in the room or something, what it does is it zeroes that field. So you, you push and you hold. It says, okay, got it. Now when it is, when it is, you can see there's a slight field because the, the rotors are nearby. But centering it puts it to zero. Now what I do is I put a pinion on, on the rotor just to give you something to hold on to so you can manage it. So I'll put a pinion on one and we'll test it and we'll see what it looks like. Now the instructions for this for this device just says put it all the way in and let it go and that should be the gauss but as you can see it's reading very low 464 gauss which is basically almost useless uh, a typical rotor would be around 1500 gauss and that would be what somebody would call a high rpm rotor and like a high torque rotor would be 1650, 1680. So something 460 is, is terribly low. Uh, so what I found I had to do is I have to, I'll just exaggerate it here. I have to pull the, the rotor in and out. You can see the, the RMS change. And I find I also have to turn it. And you can see just with a bit of manipulation we're at 1388. And the reason for that is the sensor is fixed in the unit on the back and it, it doesn't move at all. So this unit makes you, you kind of move it around to try to find the sweet spot of the rotor. You can see that uh, this is 1427. I'll turn it clockwise a little bit. Went back to 1427. I'll turn it counterclockwise. Oh, 1403, so I'm missing it. You can kind of see that you you miss the field this way or that way. 1442, 1447. So this is about a 1400 Gauss rotor. I'm moving it a bit more. 1466, 1471. So you can see there's a little bit of fooling around with this just because of the of its design. But so it's so the the positive number would be the north. You spin it 180 degrees. You'll see it's now negative. Negative 1500. So you can kind of get an idea that this is about a 1500 Gauss rotor. And what that would mean is that this would be a high, high RPM rotor. 
you'd use this in a, a two-wheel drive buggy, perhaps on a slippery track. Uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily use that in a on a carpet track because it just wouldn't have enough torque. The the Gauss reading would represent, you know, kind of means how much torque it has. So here's the the second rotor that I have. Let's instructions say just put it in there. As you can see, it's only I'll, I'll flip it to the north side. It's only a thousand Gauss, but as we as we learned, the little sensor is in the back. It's not centered with in the center of that rotor. It's kind of general purpose. So I'll just move it around a bit. I'll turn it clockwise a little. I'll pull the rotor out a little. 1740, you can see it climbing up to. 1789, 1800. So this is a very high Gauss rotor. Now, where this would be used is probably in a modified motor like a eight turn maybe a six turn type of thing where the coils themselves of the stator wouldn't have a whole lot of power and you, so you'd need the the gauss of the rotor uh, so you can see that one there is about 1800 i'll just flip it over and you can see it's minus 1800 Let's see if it'll go 1857 I'll just see if I can, no, 1847, so I pulled it out too far, 1857, turn it a bit clockwise, 1852, 1838, so I've gone past the sweet spot, 1857, 1862, right about there, pull it out a little bit, so it's about 1850, 1860, because now it, it does take a little time to kind of fiddle with this thing. Um, but you can see 1867. So th this would be a modified rotor. Even though it looked identical to the previous, the other one would be a high RPM, and this one ended up being a high torque. So if you have several ro rotors, then a tool like this is certainly helpful. Um, so it's a tip. I use this quite a bit when I'm going through blueprinting some motors. I, I'd have several different rotors to test out or even after a race to see if you've lost lost uh, magnetism in the rotor um, the one thing I have noticed over time with this is that the battery in it uses a 9 volt battery in the bottom I just find that the it uses the battery up really really quick in the eye really quick so I'm always starting a, a test session with a fresh battery and then um, just the, the operation of it, the um, you know there is a little bit of fiddling with pulling the rotor in and out, trying to find the sweet spot of the rotor. Yeah, he does have several products on his site, so that's Racer's Racer's Measurement System. I'll put the a link to his site on the in, on the video. Uh, he does have some standalone units. Now the standalone unit for the rotor system built into one of these boxes he calls it the the uh, rotor measurement system version 2.0 so it would have a hole in the side and you would slide the rotor into it uh, that that one there has a it must be a a sliding sensor inside he says that you just put it in and it, it'll sense it rather than this this particular one with a fixed sensor so there's the review of this it's a a great little tool. I've used it quite a... It's not on the bench every day, but when you're starting a new race season, you get out your old motors, you get out your new motors, and you blueprint up a motor for, for the big race. All right, so thank you very much. We'll talk to you again.